So number five on the list is going to be Borrowed Time. Borrowed Time is a fantastic perk. Basically, after unhooking someone for 12 seconds, if they get injured in any way, they will go into the deep wounds state instead of going down. That's so good because if the killer decides to hit the person that's been on the hook recently, maybe they're trying to get them out of the game as quickly as possible, or maybe you're injured and you go for the save and the person takes a hit so you don't go down. Regardless of the situation you use it in, it is a fantastic perk. And especially at lower levels of play where the killers are more likely to go for the person that was just unhooked. And yet I still think that new players should avoid running this perk. And the reason is a lot of players will, as soon as the person gets hooked, they will immediately unhook the person from behind the killer with borrowed time. And honestly, that's just not a good idea to do in a lot of situations. A lot more experienced killers will wait 12 seconds before hitting the person unhooked or just be able to pressure both of you so much that you end up losing a bunch of time. And you'll get to a point where when you try to play without running this perk, you will pull survivors off at the completely wrong time. They'll get completely killed and you'll get completely destroyed or dominated or you'll just end up getting somebody killed. Now, obviously, if you enjoy running this perk, run the perk. You know, run any of these perks if you enjoy running them. But if you're newer to the game, I recommend running Will Make It instead of Borrow Time. Will Make It makes it to where you heal people twice as quickly for 90 seconds after unhooking someone. So this will still train you to go get unhooks at a good time, but it makes it easier to heal up the person after unhooking them. And I would much rather you run that than someone just immediately pull me off hook with borrowed time and then the killer just immediately starts chasing me again. Number four on the list is going to be Dead Hard. And Dead Hard is personally one of my favorite perks. It's a really fun perk to run. And if you ever stop by the streams, you probably have seen me run it at one point or another. The thing with this perk though is it will teach you terrible habits regardless of your skill level. But it'll teach you really bad habits if you're new to the game. You see, when Dead Heart is used effectively, it can be almost treated as like an extra health state. In a situation where you would get down normally, you could press the button and then you could live for a lot longer. So it's like Dead Heart is such a fantastic perk, but at the same time, it makes you play way too aggressively. Normally, when you should just throw down a pallet, you might try to not throw down that pallet because I have Dead Heart, right? Normally, when you should like be running away and healing, you might not want to heal because, well, I have Dead Heart and a lot of times that could be a bad idea. You'll basically get to the point where when you're in chases, you're so used to using dead hard that you'll play too aggressively when you don't have it, and then you'll end up going down a lot more. If you want an exhaustion perk that won't teach you as bad habits, I recommend running something like possibly live, maybe balance landing. Number three on the list is gonna be a combination of two perks because a lot of times they're used together, but this could be for either of them separately it is going to be Sprint Burst and Urban Evasion. Now, Sprint Burst is an absolutely nutty perk. Basically, you press shift while you're walking and you get a three second speed boost just at any point. That's so good for avoiding getting hit by the killer, making distance. The thing that new players will do when they run this perk is they'll, they'll never run unless they get into a chase. So normally it might take them 10 seconds to run over to this generator and start working on it, but because they have sprint burst, they'll spend 30 seconds crouching over to it to, before they work on the generator. And that's 20 seconds that you could have spent on the generator that's just wasted. And players will do this all the time. They see someone on the hook, they'll crouch over the person on the hook. They, you know, they see someone down, they'll crouch over to try to pick them up instead of just running over there really fast. Time efficiency is so important in this game. And a perk that makes you waste as much time as sprint burst does, especially when you're newer, is bad. And Urban Evasion just compounds on it because a lot of people will use Urban Evasion and then instead of running around the map, they'll just crouch around the map thinking that that's more efficient, when in reality it's not. These perks tend to get paired together a lot and honestly, if you're newer, these perks aren't bad perks, especially not Sprint Burst, but probably you might want to just avoid them entirely. Alright, so number two on the list is going to be Spine Jill. Now this is a perk that combos extremely well with something like resilience because when the killer is looking at you, you get a 6% bonus to vault speed. When you combine that with resilience that gives you a 9% bonus to vault speed when you're injured, 
That means you can vault windows and pallets 15% quicker. That's a really good combo, and that's why a lot of higher level players will run this perk. The problem is that a lot of lower level players will become over dependent on its ability to let you know when the killer is looking at you. For example, normally when you don't have this perk on, you want to constantly be looking around you, listening for a terror radius, seeing where the killer is and trying to identify where they are. But when you have this perk and you're a newer player, what you tend to do is just stare at the perk and wait for it to light up. And the moment it lights up, regardless of the situation, you run and hide. You should not be doing that. That's such a waste of time. Maybe the killer's chasing someone else. Maybe the killer just glanced over there for a second and is walking away. Maybe you could finish the generator even if the killer is coming that way. Sometimes you need to ignore the perk, but people will use this as like a stop-go sign. And new players will play like, if the perk is lit, I run, regardless of the situation. Just avoid this perk entirely. And number one, the number one perk that new players should avoid, you, most of you guys have probably guessed it, it's self-care. Now, self-care is a very controversial perk. Some people say that it's completely useless, some people say that it's a very good perk, and no one can really decide on that. I personally fall into the category that it's a good perk, albeit a little situational, but once again, know that that's just my opinion. Basically, it lets you heal yourself at any point in time, but you heal yourself at 50% the speed of someone else healing you. Now, there are a lot of situations where this is good, and I could go into them, but, but there's a lot of them. Maybe an example is, let's say you're being chased at a pallet, and the killer is just refusing to break the pallet. He's just running around the outside of the pallet a bunch. What you can do is you can stand on one side of the pallet, and you can start healing. And what killers will do is they'll be like, oh, if I keep running around this pallet and not downing him, he's going to heal. So they'll break the pallet. So you can force killers to break pallets sometimes with this perk, which is really good. The problem with this perk, though, is more than any other perk in the game, you hate to see this on new players because the amount of time they'll waste on it. So here's a scenario. You unhook somebody, they stand right under the hook, and then you heal them for 16 seconds. All in all, from the moment they touch the ground to being healed, it might take at most 20 seconds because there's like a really short period of time where you can't heal the survivor. But there we go. 20 seconds in, both of you guys are ready to play. Now let's go to scenario number two. You unhook a new player. They have self-care. They run for like 10 to 15 seconds. And you chase after them because you're like, oh, let me heal you, let me heal you. Then they sit in the corner of the map after running for 15 seconds and start self-caring. And then you go and you, you F off, and it takes them 36 seconds to heal themselves. Twice as long, 36 seconds. Now you've wasted probably about a minute of time between the both of you, when you could have just avoided using that perk slot entirely, and then being healed significantly quicker. And the way Dead by Daylight works is you would rather have two people distracted for 20 seconds than one person distracted for a full minute. And that's the problem with this perk and new players. They, they will just waste so much time running to a corner. They might get hit and the killer might leave them in a chase. They'll, they'll run for 10 seconds. They'll, they'll heal for another 36. And it's just so much time for one player to be out of the game. And that is such a huge boon to killers. Like when I see that a bunch of people are self-caring and I'm playing killer, I'm so happy. I will literally leave that person to go self-care and waste like 40 seconds while I go chase somebody else. So like as a new player, there there are plenty of situations where this perk is good. It's not a bad perk by any stretch of the imagination. But just until you're more comfortable uh, with knowing when the best time to heal is, don't run self-care. If you really want to be healed, run bonds so you can see where survivors are and have them heal you. Run kindred so you can see where survivors are when someone's hooked and then they can have them heal you. Run a med kit so you can heal yourself a couple times. There's rarely a point in the game where you need to heal yourself like eight, nine times, right? So usually a med kit with two charges, maybe three charges is enough. If you are going to run the perk, run it with something like Botany so you heal quicker, or you could run the perk with the med kit and get more charges out of your med kit. Just, just don't run self-care by itself and just heal yourself for 40 seconds, please. Like I said at the beginning of the video, you can run any of these perks as much as you want and it's totally fine, totally okay. 
Um, if you enjoy playing with these perks, then run them. I That's totally fine. But just know that if you're trying to improve at the game and you don't want to develop these terrible habits, these perks might want to be a pass for you. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, we're getting really close to 1k subs, and you know what happens when we hit 1k subs. And I will catch you guys in the next one.